Welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HGDC. I'm Heather, the designer of Granny Square Patterns for my tribe. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul. Now, I also champion Yarny Creatives just like you to build income streams from your passion. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, welcome back to another studio vlog and today I am working on new products. I'm sending off for samples and I'm hugely excited, quite like almost apprehensive about it and um, yeah just lots of mixed emotions. I have been searching on YouTube for other people like other small businesses that are launching planners and notepads and stationery and I've not really found many so yeah I thought uh, I thought I would find more and also one person that I did find said that she wished she'd recorded more from the beginning um even though you feel like you don't have a lot to show so I was like right I'm going to document these moments so that I can look back on them, you can see what's going on, and also if there's any other people out there who want their own stationary line, then this can be like inspiration for them. Granted, they're not likely to want to put out crochet or knitting stationery, but still, like stationery as a whole, you'll get a lot of ideas from this. So, yeah, let's jump in, shall we? been like a really weird week weird couple of weeks um i had a hospital appointment everything was fine also it's also been a bit of an odd time because albie our dog was castrated and the operation went fine everything was fine however they said they need that we need to keep him still not let him lick the wound and all those sorts of things and they sent us home with a cone that wasn't um wasn't fit for purpose basically because he's so long and bendy he could get around the cone and to himself and then on top of that he did some what we call mad zoomies where he just goes crazy in the garden um and he ripped open the wound so what should have been like 10 days of recovery has turned into like 20 days so he's still pretty much on 24 7 supervision he's in the next room but i keep nipping in to make sure he's not licking anything thankfully the wound is closed now so all we've got to do is let it fully like scar over so there's no worry of him popping it open again um but it's been a little bit frustrating because the new cone that he's got the big plastic one he doesn't fit in his crate with it and albie sleeps in a crate at night and if you don't put him in his crate he's quite vocal and then he will call you back downstairs which means neither is are then going to get any sleep so for the first night um brad slept downstairs with him and then the next night albie's basically been in bed with me because um Brad doesn't sleep very well when there's a lot of movement and Albie constantly gets up and moves around plus he's licking and you have to tell him off um whereas the the shifting about doesn't really unsettle me too much but somehow I've trained myself to hear that he's licking and also when he does settle I know that he's likely to go and have a little lick so I'll just check so it means quite a bit of broken sleep and it means me and Brad haven't really been <laughs> sharing our bed um because Albie's so big he takes up so much room in the bed and um, the last couple of nights we've managed to get him to sleep down near our feet so there is a bit more room but it's still a squash we definitely need a bigger bed because when baby's here and we've got Albie and oh my gosh this is not enough room so yeah it's been a weird couple of weeks um just wading through heavy heavy emotions um I'm now 35 weeks pregnant and bump has really like made itself known dropped low which is good 
it means that my bladder is basically about this big and i have to go to the toilet every two seconds um it's mean it's meant that sleeping's quite difficult and just moving about i'm not that comfortable anymore um and the fatigue the level of fatigue that has hit me in the last i don't know since i got to about 33 32 weeks the fatigue has been unreal <sighs> Like, it doesn't matter how much I sleep, don't sleep, rest, don't rest. The fatigue is just something that sleep can't even fix. Um, for example, Sunday, I did 121 steps in total. And the amount of times that I was like, I was just exhausted. And then the next day, Monday, I was like, right, I'm going to get up, do some steps around the garden. I did about a thousand steps and by 9am I needed a 90 minute nap like it's just crazy and I'm not saying this for advice I do not want advice I'm just telling you so you know what my day to day is like at the moment I am shattered beyond belief um and that's quite difficult because ugh, I'm on day like 200 and something of this pregnancy and a lot of it I've been bed bound. So now I'm finding myself largely back in bed because I need to rest. Um, but it's really hard to keep your mind mentally stimulated and out of that funk that I keep finding myself in whilst allowing your body to physically rest. So there's just a lot of frustration and I've not got long to go, I know that. But also if you think how much I've endured and how much I've been through to get to this point, like my body is depleted the pregnancy alone would deplete anybody's body but then add high premises on top it's just madness i haven't really wanted to knit i haven't really wanted to crochet um i find the only thing really that i'm pulled towards is reading um and working on the physical products that i want to put out there um i'm finding like i'll say to myself okay you've got 20 minutes see what you can get done and that's just keeping me going through the days so yeah i'm going to show you some of those physical products <laughs> physical products where did this come from what i have always always had big big huge massive colossal plans for hdc and the hub and for anyone that doesn't know hdc is my crochet brand i'm a full-time crochet designer and the hub is like the sister part that i've created to it it's still all under one umbrella but hdc is for those who want to make my crochet patterns and maybe knitting patterns coming soon and then the hub is for like new and aspiring crochet designers or those who want their own crochet businesses knitting businesses insert your own term there the hub came about because i was being questioned on like how had i taught myself to put my patterns out there what were my tips what were the things that i'd learned from and so i started putting together like different resources i put together the first workbook in april 2020 and that was how to size grade your patterns, which basically you have your pattern idea and then you make it in sizes um, extra small to five extra large. So I put the first workbook out 2020 and then along the way with health issues and whatnot, I've had so many other plans and it's just bringing them about. And um, I put out the next workbook. I might have put out two. February this year it's all a little bit of a blur but um I then put out another one which supports the grading that's how to launch your pattern so it's everything from writing up your pattern um everything you need in your descriptions getting it tested getting it tech edited putting it out there selling it all of that is all in that workbook and then I also did another one on Instagram and it was giving content ideas because I found that a lot of 
crocheters in general, whether they crocheted as a hobby or as a designer, wasn't sure what to post. And so that's got like loads and loads of ideas in there. Um, and of course, I've got so many more planned. Um, so there's more workbooks that I'm actually creating at the moment. I'm currently working on the finances one. So how to get paid from your crochet business or knitting business, whatever it is that you have. Um, like all the different income streams that you could tap into, all the different ways you could generate money. And then as well within that workbook, it's got like um, how to assess your finances currently, how to set your goals and then like tracking your sales. And it's also got like just financial hygiene, how to manage your money, all these things that I've got like learned and picked up along the way myself. I've either read new like books and resources or I've just learned the hard way because I've done something wrong. Why have I got fluff in my hair? Oh, it's a grey hair. More grey hairs to add to the collection. So I'm, um, that's like, I don't know, I'd say 85% done because I need to do some rearranging of some page pages, add in a little bit more info and then send that off to be proofread. Um, but alongside the workbooks, I really, really, really wanted some planners. I don't know about you, but I am very much a physical person. Like I love having things on my phone and my Mac and whatnot, but I need a physical item so that I can plan. I've always been like a notebook and pen kind of person. I've always kept a journal. I've always needed like a physical planner and I need to be able to visually see what it is that I'm working towards. Um, and so I've used no end of different planners and workbooks and setups that are out there, my own bullet journals and all sorts of different things. But ultimately I want something that is specific for me as a crochet designer and it's just not out there. So I'm creating it. Now, again, this business, HGDC, I'm learning as I go. So I didn't know how to create a planner, where to get them printed or anything like that. And basically I've just researched it. I've used Google, I've used Instagram, I've used YouTube, and I've just amassed all this information and put it together. And um, I'd definitely say that if I was to do it again, I'd have done things in different orders, but that's the beauty of learning. Like if I hadn't have got started, I, I wouldn't know what to do first. Now that I've got started, I know, oof, I'm amazed at everything I've created and I'm so, so proud of it all. Now, I've got quite a few different planners in mind. Um, I want to have like, a. I don't want to give away too much in case anybody beats me to it. I want my products to be my products. Um, so I don't want to give away too much, but I've got some different planners in mind, some that support the workbooks and some that are standalone. Um, and then the idea is that whichever area that you need the support on, you get the planner and the workbooks for that. Um, and I am creating these products in mind for the new and aspiring crochet designer. So if you're like me and you want to put patterns out there or you've got pattern ideas or you've put a couple of patterns out, but the momentum isn't quite there. Um, keeping yourself organized is like a bit of an issue. Um, you get distracted by like new projects. You get a touch of burnout here and there because you like powering, powering, powering through and then like dip in energy. Um, and you just need somewhere to like contain all of your creativity, put it all down to keep self going. Then these are for you. And the first planner I've created is my pattern planner. I got a phone call from a midwife. I'm not quite sure what I was saying, but I know I was talking about my pattern planner. So I've got space there in here for you to write out design ideas. You know, like you get a million design ideas, there's space to put loads of them, but then there's space for you to then take ones that really, really call cool to you and take them all the way through to like the post launch stage. So it very much follows the format that my launch workbook has 
but you don't necessarily need the launch workbook if you've got your own way of doing things or you don't feel like you need that information then you could always skip getting the workbook but the planner will still work for you but if you have the workbook then this planner is like a huge huge support because you can then put like all of your design spec stuff so everything from the construction to the stitch all of that your mood board you put it all in here you could even add some of the yarn in if you wanted to then you make your swatch you put all your details in and then you go into um the grading and like the instructions and there's pages in here so that you can use a spreadsheet like you're taught in the grading workbook but then you can copy out the instructions in here or print them and copy and like attach them in but there's also space for you to write your notes as you go along so like as I'm making it I might have written in my spreadsheet add 40 stitches or whatever but then I might need to make a note to myself like to add in details of the chain two at the start doesn't count and all that sort of stuff so space for all of that so it's all in one place and then you go into the next stages so if you want it grading or if you grade it yourself then if you have it tech edited testing there's spaces there for doing like the call outs making sure you've got all the information putting all the dates in there then there's like boxes for all your testers so you can put their contact information you can put their instagram handles like it's all there and then that takes you away through to planning your launch. So like what social media are you going to be posting on? Like what platforms, what content? Honestly, it's all there, all in one place. And there's enough um, space in the planner to plan out six patterns. If you are a crochet designer, but not as like a full time job, then that means you could put one out every second month. And this planner would last you a whole year. And then if like me, that you like to put multiple out and you just get multiple planners. Um, there was a page limit and there was only so many pages that I could put in and get it printed. And I didn't want to scrimp on the individual pages for each section just so that you could get more patterns in. Um, I would rather get multiple of these and have a really good successful patterns than have like one of these and my patterns be so-so. So, of course, I mocked it up. I did all of the pages in rough. And then I went over to Canva. And again, because um, I couldn't find a whole lot of information out there about how things were done, I'm just going to share my process so that if anybody out there wants to start their own stationery company, then they can dive in and do that. I'm not going to keep things... Um, hugely hush hush especially at the beginning stages maybe when I go into like fancy bespoke manufacturers I might keep my sources a bit more to myself but for now it's just a simple <sighs> Google taught me everything I know so then I took this to Canva and I created the physical document it took me a fair few days I am not gonna lie like having this really helped because I could already visualize what I wanted it to look like. I've already got the HDDC branding in place and all of that stuff. So that's cool. That's really helpful. Um, and I knew that I wanted the inside of the planners to be black and white so that everybody could put their own branding in it. So um, if you're very minimal or if you're very colorful, like you can just do you, add whatever color you like. Um, so I created that over quite a few days obviously hampered by fatigue and pregnancy ailments um so i think pre-pregnancy i'd have got this done a lot quicker but it is what it is i kept chipping away at it and i've done it and then last night i sent off to get some of my products printed for samples and i've got a couple more to do now um, so once they arrive, I'm definitely doing an unboxing, like I'm living my best business life right now. Um, and then the workbooks, I also wanted to get printed because I think it would really help me make like TikToks and just product photography to be able to show the physical documents. And then also I do use my own workbooks. It'd be really useful to have them physically printed so I can put them on my bookshelf. Um, 
so I needed to I found where I wanted to get them printed which was Doc Zoo and I'll link all of these below for you to go have a look at maybe you want to get your workbook printed but when I uploaded the workbooks I needed to do a little bit of editing just so that the whole page and the numbers was within like the, the bleed marks and the crop marks to be printed so I have sorted out the launch workbook I've sorted out the um 500 instagram prompts and i'm now part way through the grading workbook and that's what i'm going to be working on today so the grading workbook is my biggest workbook by like a considerable chunk of pages it's the first workbook that i put out and since then i've updated the hdc branding and i've changed how i lay out the workbooks the grading workbook um is in the old style and it's a lot more fussy and just yeah and then when it came to the launch workbook i wanted something a lot more sleek um i wanted it to be very definitely on brand but like not over overly power overpowering not doing very well with my words today am i i didn't want it to be too overpowering and too fussy i wanted it to be like quite easy on the eyes so that when you're reading it it just flows um so i changed the format for the launch workbook and then the Instagram workbook and then because the finance one is subsequent that's also in the same format so that's fine but the grading ones needed updating and like it's so huge it's just felt like a huge huge task um, but I really want to get that printed as well so I started doing that last night and I've done a bit of it this morning I'm on page 38 <laughs> of the first document so within canva you can only have like a hundred pages per document and i've got two documents one's got 86 pages and one's got 65 and i'm on page 38 within the first 86 pages so there's a little way to go some of the pages are duplicated though so you know i've just got to copy and paste them across once i've changed them once excuse me alps 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 Guess we'll go sit with him then. And turn my lights off. Right. Come on. I just need to finish this and then I'll take you downstairs. So I'll be bed. Thank you. I've had to relocate because this beastie would be naughty. So let me get comfy. I'll tell you the last bits. Beastie. It's not a flattering angle, is it? And I got fluff on me. Look at this. Woo! There's a baby in there. <laughs> So what was I saying before Albie rudely interrupted with his knackers? I've bribed Albs with another chew so you can hear him decimating that in the background. Um, I'm on page 39 of 86. Whoa. And I am going to put a timer on for an hour and just see how much I can get done. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to just sit and get it all done. Like all my working time from now till whenever. Just put it in this and get it done. Or swap to another task. I'm probably just going to get this done. Because I work best when I just do one thing. And finish it. So. It is currently. 11.47. So at 12.47. I'll let you know how much I've got done. I will put some screen shares in. Because my screen is dirty. And it's all. It's not like clear, is it? Um, but basically, 
this is what like the page looked like before and then this is what the new page is going to look like so can you see just like how much clearer easier it is to read just cleaner so yeah an hour let's let's just do this let's just do this tribe it is 12 50 so i've done an hour and three minutes but actually i got way more done than i thought i would so out of the 86 pages i've converted them all to the new format i thought it was going to take me hours hours and hours um and it didn't so that's a bonus um i do need to go through just to make sure all the headings are what I want them to be. Um, I also need to add in all the page numbers, but that would be the very last thing I do. It also then means because I have created, sorry Alps, because I've created a couple of new pages, I then need to go through the entire document and make sure that where I'm cross referring to another page, it's still the correct number because they're all going to be out by a couple. Um, and then there's a few pages where I haven't filled the page. So I want to go through and add in some quotes. And also that means the contents page is going to need to be changed as well. Because all the numbers are like different. And I've got like a roadmap at the start. And that needs completely reformatting and overhauling. Um, but the whole of the first canva document i've converted the format so i think what i'm going to go do now is go put the oven on whilst i wait for that to warm up i've got so much washing up to do get that done get my food made and just take a really big eye break and then come back this afternoon and work on the second document the second document's 66 pages long So arguably that should take me less than an hour to convert, um, especially because some of the pages are duplicates. And then I need to put the final page in, the back cover for when it's getting printed. And again, that's going to need all of its um, titles checking and it needs page numbers going in. And the other thing I wanted to do was there's a few resources I wanted to link to, but because I got that done, that first section done, the first Canva document done so much quicker than I thought, I like, I might even get this done today. I'll probably get it all done, but the page numbering, like cross applying and the contents pages. I think I'll get everything but that done today, which then means I can just finish that off tomorrow.
this this is the one i'm so excited about alps is dreaming Okay, so let me just double check. Oh my gosh. I don't, I've just, I did this. I created this. I designed this. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. Just putting in my delivery details. Free postage, Wednesday the 11th of May. And it's Tuesday the 3rd of May today. So it's going to take eight days. So definitely need to bear that in mind. I can pay £8.42 and have it arrive on Friday. I'm not going to pay for delivery to be expedited this time. But when I put these up for pre-order, I will pay for it to be ex expedited so that people aren't waiting so long. I've done it. It says, thanks for your order. Uh, what next we'll send you a confirmation email so that should be here from the 11th of may which is next week and i'm glad that i've done that now i don't want to wait for that any longer than i need to so right now i'm absolutely starving definitely need a screen break i am going to go and put some lunch on I'm back from my lunch break. Um, the fatigue, I'm feeling fatigued, I'm feeling tired. So I think the smartest thing for me to do right now is have a little nap. And then when I wake up, either read until Brad gets home or um, knit, crochet and watch some vlogs because there's a few new channels I've discovered and I'm working my way through all the videos of like key interest um lots of small businesses those that are creating planners things like that <sighs> i would push through to some extent if it weren't for the fact that this evening brad is taking me shopping to get the stuff for my hospital bag so i really need to conserve some energy maybe even get some energy ready for that um it is frustrating because i was on such a roll this morning but i got a lot done i'm really excited that my samples will be on the way um yeah hmm. so tired So if you've watched this far, then please comment below which like product, HDDC product, are you most excited to see? It could be one of the two workbooks that I sent off to be printed and spiral bound. And that is the launch workbook and the Instagram workbook. Or is it the pattern planner? Let me know below which one you're most excited about. And I will be sure to record when they arrive so you can see my first reaction. My first unboxing video. I sent a message to Brad and let him know that I've sent off for these products 
Um, so we're going to celebrate this evening in some way after shopping. So I will see you in the next one. Take care, tribe.